வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் செஷன் ஆஃப் த ஹேண்ட் சர்ஜரி குவிஸ் த ஃபன் வே டு லேர்ன் ஹேண்ட் சர்ஜரி question number 1 the elson test is done to detect the following condition de kervain's tenovaginitis trigger finger injury to central slip or ulnar claw hand and the correct answer is injury to the central slip The Elson test is performed as follows. First, the patient is asked to keep his fingers over the edge of the table in such a way that the PIP joint is kept in a position of 90 degrees flexion. The examiner places his finger over the dorsal aspect of the middle phalangeal region of the patient's finger and asks the patient to attempt to extend the PIP joint. If the central slip is intact, the examiner can feel the increase in tension of extension at the pip joint and at the same time the dip joint will be floppy the test is said to be positive if the patient has a weak extension at the pip joint with hyper extension at the dip joint and this positive test indicates disruption of the central slip the test is said to be negative if the patient has a strong extension at the pip joint while the dip joint remains floppy this indicates an intact central slip question number 2 a mallet finger injury can develop the following deformity with time boutonniere deformity swan neck deformity hook nail deformity or clinodactyly and the correct answer is the swan neck deformity the swan neck deformity develops following a mallet injury but the time of occurrence is varied it can occur quite early after a traumatic untreated mallet finger if the pip volar plate is lax it can occur a little later when the soft tissues become lax slowly and it can also occur when the mallet injury has healed with an elongated scar Let us just try to understand how this deformity occurs following a mallet injury. When there is an injury to the terminal tendon inserting into the base of the terminal phalanx causing a mallet injury, the proximal end retracts and does not transmit any more of the extensor forces. This causes a slight proximal migration of the dorsal extensor expansion. So all the forces of extension are now acting at the level of the PIP joint. This increased force also acts on the lateral slips and makes them come to the dorsal aspect. As they come to the dorsal aspect, they begin to lie dorsal to the joint axis. And when they lie dorsal to the joint axis, it means they become extensors of the PIP joint in addition to the already powerful central slip. So that is how the swan neck deformity that is hyperextension at the proximal interphalangeal joint develops following a mallet finger injury question number 3 golfer's elbow refers to the following lateral epicondylitis medial epicondylitis dislocation of the radial head or dislocation of the olecranon process and the correct answer is medial epicondylitis medial epicondylitis is sometimes called the golfer's elbow because in making a golf swing this tendon that is the common flexor origin is stressed question number 4 the most appropriate tendon transfer for combined high median and ulnar palsy is the use of the flexor digitorum superficialis of the ring finger the abductor digiti minimi the palmaris longus or the extensor indicis proprius
The correct answer is the extensor indices proprius. The question is in combined high, median and ulnar palsy. Generally speaking, though opponent's plasty can be done by using any of the four mentioned choices, the FDS of the ring finger would be paralyzed in high median nerve palsy. The abductor digiti minimi would be paralyzed in ulnar nerve palsy and the palmaris longus also would be paralyzed in high median nerve palsy. Hence, the extensor indices proprius is the most appropriate tendon transfer among the mentioned choices in a combined high median and ulnar nerve palsy. Question number 5. The following are true about the space of poirier in the hand except it is a dorsal interligamentous space. It lies ulnar to the radioscaphocapitate ligament. It is the space into which the lunate dislocates or the space disappears on palmar flexion of the wrist. The answer is dorsal interligamentous space. The space of poirier is in fact a volar interligamentous space which is present in the floor of the carpal tunnel. It lies at the volar aspect of the proximal capitate lying between the volar radioscaphocapitate ligament and the volar radiotriquetral ligaments. This space actually expands when the wrist is dorsiflexed and disappears in palmar flexion. A rent develops during dorsal dislocations and it is through this defect that the lunate displaces into the carpal canal. Question number 6. The palmar classification type 2 of TFCC tears refers to acute traumatic injury, tear of only the TFCC articular disc, radial TFCC disruption or degenerative tear. And the answer is degenerative tear. The triangular fibrocartilage complex or the TFCC acts as a buffer and stabilizer between the ulnar head and the ulnar segment of the proximal carpal row consisting of the lunate and the triquetrum. Under the Palmer classification of TFCC tears, type 1 refers to traumatic injury and type 2 refers to degenerative injury of the TFCC. Question number 7. The tic-tac-toe classification of mutilating hand injuries was described by Delitala, Wainswig, Fuchanwe, Rankin Wakefield. And the correct answer is Wainswig. This classification was proposed by Jeffrey Wainswig and Norman Wainswig in 1997. Fu Chan Wei's classification was mainly for the metacarpal like hand and the Rank and Wakefield classification divided injuries into tidy injuries and untidy injuries. The tic tac toe classification takes into account the aspect of the hand that has been involved, the component that is involved, the vascularity status and the specific portion of the hand. According to the type of mutilation, it could be a dorsal mutilation, palmar mutilation, ulnar, radial, transverse or a degloving injury or a combined injury and according to the component involved, it could be a soft tissue loss, bony loss or a combined tissue loss and as far as the vascular status is concerned, its vascularity could be intact or it could be devascularized. And to specify the part of the hand involved, the hand is divided into nine segments which reminds us of the game that we play the tic-tac-toe. Question number 8. The first replantation of arm was done in a 12-year-old boy in 1962 by Komatsu Susumutamai Banki Malt.
and the correct answer is malt. In 1962, malt and Macon performed the replantation of a completely severed arm in Boston. In 1963, Chen performed the replantation of a completely amputated hand in Shanghai. And in 1965, Komatsu and Susumu Tamai performed the replantation of a completely severed thumb in Japan. But controversy arose about the first replantation because Malt published the article about his replantation in 1964, whereas Chen published in 1963 itself. The interesting point is that when Ronald A. Malt performed the first replantation with a team of 12 surgeons, he was a chief resident aged 31 years. He then went on to become the chief of gastroenterology at Massachusetts General Hospital 1970 and professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School in 1975. And this is the available picture of the patient who became equally popular as his surgeon, the boy who got his hand back, Everett Knowles, a 12-year-old boy who slipped while hitchhiking on a freight train. Question number 9. The following scores are used to measure the functional outcome after replantation except the Strickland score, the Chen criteria, the Tamai score, the DASH score. And the answer is the Strickland score. The other choices mentioned are all scores used to measure functional outcome after replantation. The Chen score measures the outcome with regard to return to work, the range of motion, sensory recovery and motor recovery. Grade 1 being patient able to resume the original job with more than 60% range of motion, normal sensory recovery and a grade 4 or 5 motor recovery. Grade 2, the patient is able to resume suitable work with more than 40% range of motion, near normal sensory recovery and a grade 3 or 4 motor recovery. Grade 3, when the patient is only able to do the activities of daily living with around 30 to 40% range of motion, partial recovery of sensation and a grade 3 motor recovery and grade 4 being almost no function of the limb that has survived. The Tamai score and the DASH score also measure outcomes following replantation. Whereas the Strickland score is used mainly for measuring the flexor function after flexor tendon repair. This surgeon who has made a tremendous contribution to Indian hand surgery is Babu Balraj Joshi, Bansi Balraj Joshi, Bridge Bhushan Joshi, Bhagat Balram Joshi. And the correct answer is Bridge Bhushan Joshi. Dr. Joshi started his medical education at King Edward Medical College in Lahore, was the first MS in orthopedic surgery not only from Bombay University but also in India. He then moved to Delhi and was the youngest chief of surgery at the age of 27 years at the Lady Irving Hospital in Delhi. But he came back to Bombay in 1962, joined the MGM Hospital where he worked until retirement in 1986. He offered eight new sensory flaps that he had devised and he devised the simple JESS, the Joshi External Stabilization System. I hope you enjoyed this session of the hand surgery quiz, the fun way to learn hand surgery. Please comment on whether you found it difficult or easy and most importantly whether you found it useful. And please scan this QR code with your mobile to instantly access the YouTube channel to see the latest in learning hand surgery.